What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here with Gordon with Fascinated, Fascinated By Fungi, fungi. and yes. Zach with Mushroom Cult. And we are about to um, hit up some of the Rocky Mountains looking for porcini mushrooms. The big ones, yeah. the latest Yes. They're sexy. So I shamelessly invited myself along after these guys cleared out half the uh, front range yesterday. So I hope that there's some left, but um, I'm really excited and glad to be participating in this, so thank you. So they must be, I don't know if they're associated with Aspen or the, uh, I don't know. It's not an one, it's a one in the, called the Kia, called Kavada Bashir. This one is squishy. Squishy. It's not, yeah, it's not sporing yet, but it's squishy. Hey, oh my God, it's beautiful though. I wouldn't be surprised if this is Swillis granulatus, but I just don't know. Silver cola ones, or so pinkish spores, big annulus. Smells like a mushroom. We get these in California, they're called like little oak pinwheels, but this is a similar kind of species. Um, so. All right, Zach, spur or or fur or spruce? This one's a spruce and this one's a fur. So the we're looking for the. All right. It's also not sharp. This one has sharp needles and they're all the way around the stem. All right. So we're looking for Edelman spruce. Engelman. Engelman. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, it's probably a cord. It's got the webbing. It's got a little bit webbing, kind of like a darkish field. Yeah, that, that web. Oh. Instead of a veil, it has that web. Ah, uh, cool. Fourteen. Painted Sewillis. Yeah, Sewillis Lakey Eye. That's this one. Two different sizes. Those are decent edibles. I've had them before. I think them look What does that look like underneath? Oh. Cool. It's the, the pores instead of gills. Wow. It could be just a big fortune. It's probably a little past. Past its prime. You found one. You found one. Yes. You got it. A little past its prime. I'll let this one uh, yeah, let this up. one go. Look at that beauty. Yeah. yeah, brought to you by Zach from Mushroom Cult. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna clean this off so it keeps my bag fresh. As we continue to search this beautiful valley. But if you put UV on them, they glow under UV. Wow. So you see it best on the gills. If I had KOH2, it would turn, um, turn kind of orangey. So what is that? It's a UV flashlight. And it's easier to see if you're in the, um, yeah. in the dark, clearly. Cool. But you can kind of see like yeah. on the gills there. Turn it on. Cool. And it's a hypoloma. Yep, hypoloma sulfur tuft. Well, they're, they're just bird's nest fungi. So these are, people love these mushrooms, but they're so small, it's impossible to see them most of the time. But they're little saprobic wood decay fungi called bird's nest fungi. And if I pull off the, uh, the jelly membrane, you'll see there's tiny little eggs inside called paradeals. 
So those are what the spores are attached to. And when the, the jelly lining comes off, raindrop hits this, bounces the little eggs out, and then they spread around. And you get bird's nest fungi all over the place. So. Super cool. Yeah, I guess it'd be cool to toss it again. Never underestimate the trail. Look at that beauty. Part, you just want to cut all like the big parts of the dirt off and if there's any you know bug damage or mold or anything like that get that off and it's good because we can leave the base in the woods and what i like to do is collect it all and then cover it up so etiquette wise you're not leaving a mess for people in the woods got to leave the forest floor kind of somewhat undisturbed but beautiful porcini beautiful okay so right here in the rocky mountains and we're pretty near some Engelmann spruce, and we're finding king boletes. But these are Rocky Mountain Reds, Boletus rubriceps. And they are just absolutely gorgeous mycorrhizal mushrooms. And super, super tasty. Oh. Oh, look at that. Wow, look at that beauty. So we'll go ahead and trim the bottom off here. Here's that knife if you want. Yep, yep, do that. I can, you want me to film you picking this one up? All right. Make sure you get, uh, get on film too. See, I mean, my best practice is to like trim them back into the hole. Um, cause people are always like, you should cut them. And I'm like, yeah, but if I cut it, I would lose like all this good porcini stuff. Yeah. And like, I have seen no evidence scientifically, at least it says that like cutting a mycorrhizal mushroom, you know, versus plucking it is going to make it like grow back better. Cause like, that's not really how mycorrhizae work. So right. what, what do we got here? All right, what's up guys? So we are here in the Rocky Mountain region. Um, we've got a Boletus ruberceps. Ooh, ooh, ooh look at that. Bolete. Yeah. So you can see this beautiful color and- Wow, look at the stipe on that. Look at that. It's growing out. So That's crazy. I'll pick this out here and ooh, look at that. So my philosophy is after cultivating mushrooms indoors, I have noticed that even the leftover butts of the mushroom will tend to become, you know, insect or bacteria food. So mm -hmm. I think it's worth picking it out and then giving that mycelium a chance to repair itself. And Gordon here has taught me <laughs> the proper etiquette for yeah you want to you want to cover that up so up other people don't have to see your mess in the woods but i like it and then i'll <laughs> give a little sprinkle here yep just keep the hole covered everybody's happy look let's see that porcini oh my goodness look at that thing Woo! nice find huh. oh. beautiful yeah show me the show me the pore surface perfect now give me a little tap i want to hear the taps solid <laughs> oh, that's solid <laughs> All right, Zach's tactic is distractions. Look at those beauties. Here, hold them up. Come off. Hit it. Do you have a scientific description of the texture? <laughs> uh, there's a name for it. I don't remember what it is though. But it's it's cute. Get a little puffball. Some of those and wow, that's a good one. Whoa. Yep. Uh, Rhizom maculata. It's one of Colorado's native orchids. It's really common in the mountains right about now. And its seeds are basically microscopic seeds that when they blow onto the ground, they need to be attacked by a fungus in order for them to even germinate because they don't have a nutrient packet with them. And this is parasitizing some fungi under in the soil. It does not photosynthesize. Pretty cool stuff. All right, we just walked into a gold mine. Colorado, these are themes. We've got pines and aspens and spruce and, holy shit, what? Oh my God. Oh, there's the dead bones and 
the biggest machine I've ever seen in my entire life. Look at this thing. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Poor Chief. Oh, it's huge. Overall. Um, you want to do the honors? Who's going to oh, lift that? Oh, look at this huge machine. I'm going to pick it. Pick it. Ah, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this enormous, enormous bikini. Really? Cortinarius versus a Bolete Ruberceps. Very similar, but you can see the webbing here versus the spongy underside. Oh, that's a really pretty one. I love like when they get the dark red.